if you are rubbing skin with somebody who has an outbreak, if you kiss somebody that has a cold sore, you're gonna get it. It's the same thing if you're having sex with somebody who has an active outbreak down there, you're gonna get it. The way the herpes virus is most commonly transmitted is through something called viral shedding. Did you know that herpes is one of the most common sexually transmitted viruses in the world? Many people live with it and don't even know it. About two thirds of the population live with the herpes virus. My name is Adrian Rommel. I'm a holistic nutritionist that specializes in nutrition and wellness for women's sexual health. And one of my main areas of expertise and focus is herpes because I've personally lived with herpes for almost 20 years. In this video, I'm going to explain the different types of herpes viruses they are, just how common herpes is and how they work in the body, how they're most commonly transmitted, and how I live with herpes and how I have learned to manage it. So let's get started with talking about the herpes virus itself. Herpes is also known as cold sores, but there's all kinds of other herpes viruses that are in the same family, like chicken pox, like shingles is another one, and most commonly cold sores. It's so common. There are two different types of herpes viruses. There is HSV-1 and there's HSV-2. The difference between the two is HSV-1 is most commonly oral cold sores, so cold sores around your lip or around your nose, as well as genital herpes. And herpes, HSV-2 is most commonly just genital herpes, rarely herpes around the face. Just how common it is, one in four people live with HSV-1 and one in six people live with HSV-2. If you think about it, if you're in a room with a bunch of people, out of those six people, at least one of those people is gonna have herpes. But that one out of six person that might have herpes knows about it. The rest of them may have herpes, but they don't know about it because herpes is often asymptomatic just like HPV is. How the herpes virus works in the body is when we contract it, it lays dormant in our nervous system. In the nerves that run down our back, that's HSV2, and the most common with HSV1, the nerves that sit in the back of our ear. And they lay dormant, and they're just kind of sleeping there until something triggers it. So we can either get a cold sore here, which is you might have, oh, I mean, I'm sure everybody has seen what a cold sore looks like. You would get the same genitally. It's either one sore or a cluster of very many small sores. And they are like little blisters, like fluid filled blisters, little ones. And then when they break open, that's when it gets red and kind of like scabs over. I know that sounds gross. Now, it is a virus. So it is dependent on the health of our gut, on the health of our immune system. That's why I'm talking about it on the Bioptimized Woman because we're talking about gut health on this channel. And Bioptimizers has a wonderful line of supplements like probiotics and B vitamins and magnesium that can help you reduce your herpes outbreaks if you do live with herpes. There are a few more things that I wanted to mention about the virus itself, especially about outbreaks, because everybody is different and everybody who lives with herpes experiences outbreaks different. Some people get regular outbreaks. Some people get no outbreaks. Some people get three outbreaks a year. Some people don't even know that they have herpes. It's very weird and mysterious like that. But how it works, is usually the first outbreak, if you do get an outbreak, is always the worst, but sometimes it just depends. You may never have an outbreak after that. It totally depends on you and your health. How herpes is transmitted. Herpes is a skin virus and it's transmitted via skin to skin contact. If you are rubbing skin with somebody who has an outbreak, if you kiss somebody that has a cold sore, you're gonna get it. 
It's the same thing if you're having sex with somebody who has an active outbreak down there, you're gonna get it. Now, what makes the herpes virus a mystery? The way the herpes virus is most commonly transmitted is through something called viral shedding. And this is when somebody who lives with the herpes virus is shedding the skin cells of the virus and they don't even realize it. Maybe their body is in a bit of a weakened state, like maybe their immune system is a little bit suppressed. Typically people don't know that. That's why it's really important that when you live with herpes, you need to learn how to manage this virus within your body so that you can keep your immune system boosted so that you can reduce the risk of that viral shedding. Because when your immune system is boosted, when your body's feeling good, when you're taking good care of yourself, there's a way lower chance of you transmitting the virus to somebody else. Another important thing that I wanted to mention that is herpes is not on a regular STI panel. So when you go to get tested for STIs at your doctor's office, herpes is not included on that test. You have to specifically ask for a herpes test separately. A lot of people don't know that, and when they walk out of a doctor's office with um, an STI panel that shows that they don't have any STIs, one of the most common STI tests is missing off of that panel. And that's why it's so common because people don't know that they have it. They're getting tested, but they're not getting accurate results because the herpes test isn't on there. You have to specifically ask for it. When you get tested, get tested regularly and ask for a herpes test. My experience with herpes is an interesting one. I've lived with herpes for almost 20 years now and it's taken me about 20 years to finally get to the point where I feel okay with, where I feel good with it in my body, where I'm comfortable with it, where I accept and love myself no matter what. And I've really learned to end the internalized shame and stigma that I was creating for myself about it. And now I've gotten to the point where I can talk about it and talk about it very openly and publicly. Sometimes to the point where I forget that people aren't used to hearing about it. <laughs> but that's been a part of my journey and it's really awesome to empower you all through this and help so many people who are living with herpes because there is so much shame and stigma that comes along with this virus. Like I said, I think that the shame and stigma is bigger than this virus. And when I contracted herpes 20 years ago, I didn't really know what it was. Like, I don't remember when the last time I got a sex education class was and learned about herpes. Like, I got it when I was dating my second boyfriend ever and it was traumatizing and it was very, very, very upsetting. It was devastating. And the doctor who diagnosed me even shamed me for it. And it was horrible because I had a horrible outbreak. But after it healed, I never really had an issue with it. Maybe in within 15 years, I had maybe five outbreaks, which were triggered by, I don't even remember because they were just so random and really not a big deal and my partners were fine with it. I really never had an issue with it until I went back to school to become a nutritionist. Go figure. My stress level went from here to here fast <laughs> to the point of burnout and it was horrible. It was unpredictable. I couldn't control it. I didn't know what was going on with my body. I didn't understand what was happening in my body. It really started to impact my mental health and my emotional health because I'm single, dating, but so apprehensive and not trusting my body and just, it, there was so much. It really started to take a toll on me and really negatively impact my life. And it wasn't until I really learned how to manage it, did it start going away, that I could connect it to this adrenal fatigue burnout. When I finished school, of course, I could start to relax more and rest and take the time to take really good care of myself. I took some time off. I feel like when we live with herpes, a lot of emotions come up and it's kind of, herpes is like a mirror that mirrors all of our stuff that we've always felt, whether it be unworthiness or people pleasing or these are the most common things that I hear from my clients is that what are people going to think of me? Like, how are, how am I ever going to date again? Who's going to love me? How am I ever going to have sex again? And not feeling worthy of love and sex and pleasure in their lives. Herpes brings all of this stuff up. 
So it wasn't until I started really understanding that and understanding that whenever I would get an outbreak, whenever I was triggered, it was always during a certain time in my life where I had a lot of emotional stress at home. So when I started learning that stuff and doing the work to understand that, nobody taught me that. I had to figure that out for myself. I was like, oh, huh. So it's been a journey. I haven't had an outbreak in almost a year, which is insane. Last year I had four outbreaks. So ever since I finished school, the outbreaks have been getting less and less because I've been learning how to manage it, learning how to take good care of myself and learning more about myself than I ever have before. And to be honest, I'm super grateful for herpes for that because it has taught me so much and it's really taught me to prioritize my health and well-being, which is beneficial for me in the long run anyways. So that's been my journey with herpes and I'm feeling so much better about myself now without having an outbreak in the past year and I know that I'm handling it and what I'm doing is working and it's amazing to help so many people who live with herpes go through this as well. I wish that I had this kind of support when I was going through all of the roller coaster of my experience of living with herpes too. So what am I doing that's working, you ask? Good question. I'm going to share that in my next video when I share my top three tips on how to manage, prevent, and heal herpes outbreaks both naturally and with the medication because in this case, I believe we need both. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your health. If you live with herpes, just know you're not alone. It's so common. Again, one in four people have HSV-1 and one in six people have HSV2. You're not alone. Two thirds of the population has it, and those are the people who know that they have it. If you enjoyed these videos in this series, in the other videos that I've done for the Bi Optimized Woman, and you want to see more, I wanna hear from you. Let me know if you have any suggestions on juicy topics that you'd like me to discuss and create a video on. And if you are enjoying these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button below and the little bell notification to let you know when I release my last video as part of this series, which will give you my top three tips on how to manage, prevent, and heal herpes outbreaks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.